So as a dentist, you are treating sleep apnea. And just so I understand this correctly, so during the day, these patients are breathing just fine. Mm -hmm. They lay down and now they can't breathe. Right. What's going on? Is their jaw dropping back? Their tongue right. dropping back? What's, what's happening? Right, so for these patients, daytime, they're breathing fine. Everything's, everything's fine, they're awake, they're alert, their body's telling them to breathe. When they're sleeping, they're, they're fall, their jaw's falling back, you're not awake, so different systems, and your jaw's falling back, soft tissues are collapsing, meaning adenoids and tonsils, the soft palate, uvula, all of these soft tissues that are back here, majority are in the velopharynx, and that is all collapsing. And so the jaw falls back, the tongue falls back, and that's what causes the obstruction. Snoring is the vibration of the soft tissues. It's, it's the sound of the vibration of the soft tissues. The obstruction is literally when you have collapse of the airway. And so that's what we're looking so at with apnea. So you're splinting it out, splinting so it correct. forward? So the oral appliances are fabricated so that in alignment with your teeth, you're bringing the jaw in a comfortable forward position so that we're maintaining that patency of airway. So comfortably, we're moving the jaw, literally moving the jaw forward because the tongue is, a, the tongue is attached to the jaw. We're moving it literally mil millimeters exponentially can open the airway. And so we're moving it just a little bit, incrementally over time, and that allows patency of airway so you can breathe at night. And you can prove this, I guess, scientifically with the numbers that these apnea yes. patients are getting better, and how do you prove that? We do, so with some patients, we'll send them home with a sleep study, and we'll check and see, you know, baseline without CPAP or without an oral appliance. We'll check what their number is, and this is, they've already had a diagnostic, so we're just doing this on our own in, in our office. And then we'll test them again with the oral appliance just to see where, where we're at. And it tells us everything from positional to the amount of sleep time, to how long they were in REM, how long they, it took to go to sleep, sleep latency, REM latency, positional, it's all helpful. So we have patients, Randy, that have patients that are actually waking up in the middle of the night 31 times, meaning 31 times every hour they stop breathing for 10 seconds or longer. Wow. And we're bringing them down with the oral appliance to maybe even five or six, seven, and that's making a world of difference and their sleep architecture, and they how do feel those number, it. How do those numbers compete with uh, CPAP? Is it equal? It's, it depends. With the patients, um, depending on the severity, uh, with mild and moderate, we can get them to really, really good levels. Okay. With severe, it, it's more challenging, but you know, it's not impossible. But CPAP is 100% is effective. But the issue is, is as long as the patient's using it. Are they using CPAP? So the medical doctors that send you patients they have a stubborn patient that says, they call you and say, hey, look, they will not wear their CPAP. What can you right. do for me? Right, so we invite them in and we talk to them and we discuss oral appliance therapy and we fabricate in this oral device and we tell them, this is, this is basically your other option and it works. For the majority like of these it. people, is it like a miracle? I don't want to put words it in is. your mouth. It's, it's like People, a lot of, for a lot of people, it could be their last hope. I have a patient who... Um, is ready to go through bariatric surgery. I hadn't seen him for about a year, and he kept missing follow-up after follow-up. I literally had to call him and tell him, you please need to come in. Please come in. I need to see you. I want to see you. We need to do follow-up because, you know, he's very large, and mm -hmm. we needed, it's really important. He's not using CPAP. And when he's not using CPAP or the oral de device, we have an issue. He could have a heart attack. He could die, so in the middle of the sleep. So he came in, we talked to him, and it took a lot of cajoling on my, my part, and we had a huge discussion. I- so You had to talk him into wearing your I, I had your to appliance. motivate him a little bit. You know, most patients are already motivated, but sometimes you need to literally talk to your patients and have a discussion and say, are you wearing this? Because if you're not, the other alternative is not looking good. Okay. If you're not wearing your, if you're not wearing your old device, meaning. So what happened? So he came back. He he told me, okay, I'll wear it tonight. He wore it that night. He came back the next morning, and he couldn't believe. It took a year, but he couldn't believe that he's not going 
to the bathroom in the middle of the night. He woke up with less fogginess. And I said, okay, we've, I actually advanced him all the way to the max. I never really do that on any patients, but I really wanted to do it because I wanted to see if we're gonna see um, results, if he's responsive. He was responsive. So I said, okay, let's set, send this back to the lab. Well, he didn't even want to do that. He said, said I'm fine. I'm he good. said, no, I don't, want to, I don't want to part without this. I want to give this a shot. Good. And so there we have it. So it took you one year of talking him into it. Yeah, because he missed his follow-up And now visits. he feels better. Yeah.